In addition to sometimes confusing hieroglyphic instruction sheets, older ANT kits are often known for having warped parts. And this one that I'm building is certainly no exception. Working on some sub-assemblies of the lower compartment area, I found that the sides are considerably warped. And although I can get a decent glue joint along the bottom, the top is mostly unsupported. Left and right lower compartment areas are partially assembled here, and although the one on the right doesn't look as bad, they both need a bit of extra work. Dealing with these warped parts is fairly straightforward, and one of the tools required to fix them is as simple as a block of wood cut from a section of 1 by 3 finished lumber. The most important thing is the block be square, and the bottom corner be sanded at a 45 to provide some clearance. An assortment of small clamps is also required. And triangular gussets cut from 80 thou sheet styrene. Check to make sure the sheet has a square corner, and trim if required. Even a brand new sheet out of the package may not be square, so double check before starting. Mark out braces of the appropriate size. For this model, square pieces, an inch and a sixteenth per side, were ideal. Draw a line from corner to corner, divide the piece into two triangles. Cut the piece in half, and trim off the opposite corners, creating two braces, with a corner trimmed off for clearance. Any raised ejector pin marks, like the ones highlighted in pencil here, will interfere with alignment and need to be removed. I like to do this with a small carbide end mill and a Dremel tool. Because this area is hidden from view, a smooth finish isn't a concern. The most important thing is there be no raised surfaces. Start working from the square end, which on this model is the forward end, which has the end wall already glued in place, and clamp the wooden block down to the floor. Tape a small piece of cardboard over the details on the front surface to prevent them from damage, and clamp this surface against the wooden block, creating a 90 degree angle. In this view, it can also see how the tapered corner of the wooden block provides clearance for that molded strip along the floor, where the side piece glues in place. To capture what we've gained, glue one of the braces in place, and let it dry thoroughly. This takes some time, so it's a good idea to have other projects on the go, to keep you busy while the glue sets. When the glue on the first brace is cured, you can then move the block forward, and add a second brace, as shown here. With two braces in place, it isn't perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. The next stuff will be gluing in the inside wall, and we can add additional braces to this piece as well. Use more of the triangular braces that you cut earlier, clamp them to the existing braces already installed, and glue in place. This makes for a strong joint, and being two separate pieces, they're easy to adjust to fit. Using overlapping triangular braces works well, and is easier than trying to cut a piece the exact size to fit between the two vertical pieces. I use a similar technique to brace van trailers, simply cutting the pieces a little bit larger to suit the size of the trailer walls and floor. That's all for this installment. Thanks for watching everyone, and don't let warped parts defeat you.